Because I used so many different skills as a content creator, the Mirror Pro had to fit into a lot of different workflows to be worth it to me. So I spent the past few months testing it for writing, coding, design, music production, and filmmaking. And yeah, here's how it went. Basic actions like highlighting, formatting, annotating, and dragging work perfectly with the Mira, and while the text looks a little crunchy up close, it didn't affect readability. In fact, I actually preferred it to the retina display of my MacBook because the lettering felt more organic, like pecking away at a typewriter. Also, I thought working in grayscale might be a problem for web development, but when I switched to a high contrast theme, it was just as readable as my iMac. And I even spent the past couple months coding an app for finding barefoot shoes entirely on the Mirror Pro. Although I did have to check the colors occasionally on my iPad. Obviously the Mirror Pro isn't meant for design work, but it was helpful for getting basic layouts together so I didn't have to spend so much time staring at my MacBook. And if you're someone who's used to drawing on a tablet while looking up at a screen, then you could potentially use the Mirror Pro for illustration as well. When I tried writing some music and logic, the dark UI was basically unusable, but inverting the colors made it much better, which was also useful for analog instruments like the Electron Digitone that have digital controller apps. Video editing with Premiere was the same story, except I also had to add an adjustment layer to invert the timeline footage. The funny thing was, I actually preferred the inverted UI, and it worked so well that I edited the last three videos on my channel almost entirely with the Mirror Pro, only switching back to my MacBook to finish up the color grading. 